So today we're going to continue our topic of energy harvesting. Um, and we're actually going to do an example. So the simplest example would just be this. We have a piezoelectric material. Okay, and has some polarization again, reiterating this fact. And we're just going to put hook a resistor up to it. We know that when we push on a piezo, and as a reminder, when you push on a piezo, if you are on the side where you would normally pull it from, you would get a positive charge. So you should be a positive charge here, a negative charge here. Therefore, when you're going to see the piezo, dot the dot on the piezo is usually going to be put here which indicates that they pulled in this direction so if we actually push on this piezo charges would develop um whatever way you want to look at it electrons would go to the positive side or the uh, whatever positive charge would go th flow through this resistor and this resistor would dissipate charge now this resistor is just representing an external circuit uh and this external circuit would actually be charging a battery so it'd be charging a battery. So we're just going to assume that whatever energy is dissipated in this resistor is actually going to an external circuit. And that will charge the battery. So OK, and then we'll assume this resistance is going to have a, in reality, this external circuit is going to have a, a frequency dependence, which we'll be designing for. However, in this case, we won't look at the frequency dependence. We'll just assume it's a resistor. We're just trying to understand. So actually, this is the uh, damping, active damping case, where we are actually designing a, you know, the piezoelectric system such that it's going to uh, dissipate energy. In this case, again, the, we're just using it, this active damping model as a means of understanding energy harvesting. And we're just going to assume that the energy which is being dissipated is actually the energy going to the battery. So let's take this case. So case one. So we press on the piezo very slowly. Press very slowly. So if you look at time and displacement, and let's call displacement delta D, um, we have a very slow increase. OK. Uh, that's fine. So what's going to happen? Uh, and we and we, we do this by applying a force. So uh, this may not be the have the maybe the best one. Um, let's let's just draw that again. So let's just draw the force here. Force, and we're going to increase the ramp up the force very very. And this is the long time. So we'll draw this. You know, this is a very long time uh, that this force is being built up on. So. As we know, uh, if we have a piezoelectric material in this in this system, uh, essentially the system is short circuited because of this resistor. Uh, so at a very slow, uh, you know, pressing force, it's it's as if we have a short circuit across this uh, piezoelectric material because at the end of the day, all of the charges are going to travel to the other side. So that's what a short circuit means that the store, uh, charge cannot be stored. So we have a compliance of short circuit. So that's called SE. So, and we, we have stress, which is capital X, is related to the strain in the material through this, um, uh, through this uh, constant. Okay, so we know that the uh, energy which is going to be stored in a piezoelectric material, or any material in fact, for a certain strain is one half. That's going to be one half the spring constant, which I'll be calling k, times the displacement squared. Well, what does that end up being? What's the spring constant? If I remember correctly, um, it's going to be um, 
So, okay, look. All right, just a real ca ca calculation because I forgot how to calculate the spring constant. So the spring constant K, effectively, we uh, have some displacement and we get a force out, a spring constant. So if we start with this equation and we work our way down, uh, stress is force over area, strain is change in displacement uh, over the length of the material. So we can get the spring constant to be equaling this. So let's draw a different, so K, the effective spring constant would be A, S, E, over L. So we have one. Um, A, S, E, L, and we'd have this length here squared. Um, and that would be the stress here. So that would be the energy. I'll just write that as E, or usually we write energy as capital U. That's kind of confusing. So in this case, this would be the energy which is going to be stored in the material due to uh, this displacement. So however, if you want to put things in terms of um, length, if we multiply the top and bottom by L, we get 1 half A S E. So now we have length squared on the bottom, so now we can get strain squared, assuming the strain is constant, which it's going to be, times the length. So this is going to be the mechanical energy which is stored in the material, okay, due to me pressing with the force F. Uh, and now how do we get that force F? Um, F equals... Um, the, the force, or let's say we, we apply stress, that would be sort of easier to apply stress. Um, so with the stress, we would just have, we would just substitute in this case, uh, the stress times the uh, area, uh, the elastic compliance, or we can just do the force over the area if you want to put force. So either way, we can get a, an, an expression for energy. That's not actually the point here. The point is, what energy, the question that we're going to be asking is what energy is transferred to the battery, which is the external circuit. Or uh, yep, external circuit, or, or in this case, we're just using resistor. So the energy in a resistor, or rather the power of a resistor, is equal to I, which is the current, squared R, the value of the resistor. And if then we determine the time and the current, we can then get the uh, power. So power is that. So the power is U, energy, over time, which I'm just going to write T. In this case, I'm going to write for energy, I'm going to write T. Okay. So we have to specify a certain time. So this time is really long. All right, really long time. Time, let's say, it's might as well be infinity. So for a really long time, for a long time, the power is going to be about zero. Uh, and that also tells us um, some other things, that because the time is long, and the charge was going to be developed, see, remember this, this equation here, um, force, equal force times the d constant is going to be charge. There was some equation, I don't know, I can't remember. Time, but basically, the d constant relates the charge and the force applied on the piezo. Um, I'll have to recall this equation. Uh, I know this is true. Polarization, and we can get charge and something. So anyways, the force relates the charge on the, uh, on, on the, uh, the piezoelectric material. So if you have a really... We have a fine we have a long time and then we have a finite charge. 
And if you can remember, what's current? Current is equal to charge over time. So, so if this, if this, if this denominator is really long, the current is about zero. Which means the current squared, if the current is zero, then the product of these two numbers is going to be close to zero. However, let's assume that um, we're not, um, that we, we don't have, so we, before we assumed that time was really long, approximately infinity for, for practical purposes, which then meant the current equals zero, which then meant the energy stored or energy transfer, this is called UT, that was going to be approximately zero because of that case. However, what if time is less than infinity and the time is also much less than any resonant frequency? So we can just assume that the strain is constant and, uh, and we don't have any uh, mechanical resonance phenomena happening, which may be important later to, to consider. So what if we assume that? Then what happens? Then how much energy is stored? Or how much energy will be dissipated? So in that case, we have to look at a couple of things. So first we're going to look at the charge generation rate. At what rate is charge being generated in the piezo? And that is going to be equal to if you want to start from this equation, force times the d coefficient equals the charge generated. So we have to look at this. F, we have to take the deriv time derivative of each side. The d constant has no time derivative. And the charge equals the charge time derivative. So first we're going to look at the charge generated. Uh, so we'll assume that the force is equal to at any given time, let's say it ramps from zero. So force over time, it's gonna be a linear function with time. And let's say it's five newtons, five newton seconds. So if you multiply this by the seconds, you'll get the five, five newtons, is, it's, it's increasing by rate of five newtons. And for practical purposes, let's say the, the d coefficient is also five coulombs per newton, which is right and wrong. It's gonna be probably like 500 picocoulombs per newton. Let's call it, yeah, let's call it that. 500 picocoulombs per newton, that's approximately a good number. So if we, if we take the time derivative, what, what do we get? We get 5 newtons per second times the d coefficient equal, uh, which is 500 picocoulombs. So we get 2,500 picocoulombs per second. Now this is the red generation of... Uh, of charge this is the rate of generation of charge this is not the current though this is not the current this is the rate of generation of charge then what we can consider is um, something else then we will consider how fast fast is it flowing we need to know how fast the current is flowing so let's assume this. Let's start with the first. Uh, so how fast is the current flowing? If you want to look at a piezo, we can understand that this is the piezo as a capacitor, essentially at DC frequency type condition. And we have this external resistor. So we have this resistor and we have the PZT capacitor. And what happens when you connect these two? the current flows around and it flows around according to the RC constant okay so the voltage is going to drop according uh, along this capacitor according to the RC time constant so we're going to get uh, so let's say you started with a certain voltage um, you started with a certain voltage um, here, let's, because we're, let's say we just immediately we applied the charge, so we started with the voltage. Let's say I'm just giving an example, and then we the, the uh, it will then start to decrease. And you know at the RC time constant there'll be you know one over tau or whatever. Um, there'll there'll be like sixty seven percent less charge at a certain 
you know, time the time constant. Um, so it's important. So what's essentially happening is that um, we have the rate of charge. So charge is being generated. So there's a Q dot. And furthermore, it has to be factored into the R sim time constant. So this is not a case where we're, we're constantly having charge being generated and it's constantly being being starting to flow. Uh, so let's and and it's and you can't keep pressing and you can't keep uh, increasing the, the, the force. Eventually, you're going to get to a force where you're going to destroy the material. So uh, the force will be finite. And you can't go farther than this is force, this is time. You're not going to go farther than a certain force. So eventually, uh, this is what the probably the charge, you know, the current is going to look look like. Maybe it's going to be, you know, increasing because as you're increasing the charge, and then it will suddenly decrease out. So this would be the this would be the current. Or this this could be this could be the charge on the material because at the at time infinity, uh, all the charge would have dissipated, and at this maximum point in time, uh, there would be either, depending on the RC time constant. So if the the resistance is really low, it's almost like a short circuit. There will be hardly any current. However, if there R is really high, basically all this charge will start to store 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 because it can't get out fast enough, and then it will decrease. And all obviously becomes zero over time because we have the uh, resistor in place. So this is just part the first part of the lecture, um, and the next part and the next part of the section will actually solve the problem. So we'll specify a force. Uh, we'll specify a um, RC time constant. Uh, we'll specify a resistance, uh, a force rate. So delta F. Uh, for how many seconds uh, and we'll specify you know the piezo electric D coefficient and then we will understand what the current is so if you integrate the you know so if we have uh, we, we, I discussed that R I squared R is equal to power right but this I it has it's a function of time because the charge rate is changing um, the charge on the piezo is changing, and if as the charge is changing uh, and being added, the uh, the current over the resistor is going to also be changing. So that's the case there. So I squared R. Uh, so, but if you integrate both of these over time, zero to t, zero to t, and we can even call t infinity, and this will be dt, dt. Then we will definitely come to understand. Uh, and we will we will come out with an energy term here. This will be energy, and this will come out to be some number. But the trick is you have to figure out what the I is, and you got to do some equations for that. And we were going to go ahead and do that in the next part of the lecture. Thank you for watching.